All right, we're doing the Build Your Own Shell Code Crafters Challenge in Zig. Uh, so if you want to follow along with this challenge, there will be a link in the description that you can use to get started. Um, but in this example, we are going to build a REPL. So in the previous one, we printed a prompt, we handled missing commands, and now we need, need to build a read eval print loop so that our shell can execute more than one command and it can keep running. Uh, so there's some information here. One of the things I really like about Code Crafters is if you don't know what a REPL is, they have a link to it. So you can click this and it'll point you to an example. So in our case, this is a Wikipedia article. They're not always Wikipedia articles, but a lot of times Wikipedia articles have a lot of good information. So a REPL is an interactive loop that reads user input, evaluates it, prints, it, prints the result, and then waits for the next input. Here's how it will execute our program to test it. So it'll call your program and then it will send a series of commands to the shell. So invalid command one, invalid command two, invalid command three. Um, it might not be these, this is just an example. So you can't hard code these because you, you can't guarantee that it'll be invalid command one, two, and three. The exact number of commands sent in the command names will be random. Yeah, like I just said, in the previous stages, all commands will be invalid. So uh, the response will always be command name, command not found. So all we're really doing at this point is implementing a loop. So let's go back to our code. We'll fire up Vim really quick. Okay. And then, so we have a lot going on here. So we have a uh, uh, sorry, a uh, standard out writer. And then we write to that standard out writer. So we know that um, actually maybe a good way to do this is let's look at a shell. So I have a very customized shell, but generally, well, actually, let's just fire up bash. So you can see that the way bash works is that it says bash 3.2 and then the dollar sign. Um, the dollar sign is pretty common. It indicates that there's input for the shell. Uh, the bash 3.2 part, not so common. So kind of ignore that for this, this part. But if I say echo hello, it prints hello and then says it prints the prompt, right? So the prompt is bash 3.2 and a dollar sign. So in the case of our program, the prompt is just the dollar sign. So if we come back to this, you can see here on line seven, we have just the dollar sign. So what we're gonna do is every time you input a command, we need to print the dollar sign indicating that we are ready for you to input more. So I'm gonna do a while loop and we're just gonna do while true. We'll take this, we'll throw this here and we'll let zig format do its thing. Uh, to my knowledge, we can take the standard in reader, move it up here. So we're not getting a handle on the standard in reader every single time that we are in the loop or every iteration of the loop. Um, and we will print the dollar sign. We'll declare a buffer. Uh, this actually might be able to be something that we could uh, clean up to and pull out outside the loop. But my Zig knowledge is somewhat limited, so I'm not gonna change it for now, and we might change it in the future. We'll get our user input just like before, and then we'll print command not found just like before. So let's go ahead and, oh, did I do something wrong? Did it, it's an expected statement into file. Don't know if I did something wrong or if the Zig language server is throwing a fit. So what we'll do is we'll try to build it. Uh, sorry, Zig build. It built successfully, so I think either my Vim setup or my Zig language server was throwing a fit. So we'll go ahead and add this. We'll co commit attempt number three. And then I'm going to push this. And if you're curious where these numbers are coming from, like in the last video it was number two, this one's number three. Um, it's the number listed right up here. So using Zig number three, it just helps me keep track of which commit corresponds with each slice of the challenge. So again, these are running in a cloud server, so it's spinning up an instance, it's running tests against your code, and it's doing the build for you. So it could take a couple minutes. Uh, usually it doesn't take minutes. It could take a minute maybe. Uh, so our test pass, congrats. We can move on to the next step here. So I'm gonna hit mark stage is complete since we're good. I do like looking at the code examples. No one else has shared code examples for Zig. I'm actually curious if I'm the first one to do this in Zig too. Sorry, so what we can do now is hit next stage and that will take us to the next step in our process, which will be the next video in this playlist.